Well, let's get more on business, business and finance news. We're joined now by Suzanne Haddon, who is the Managing Director of BFG Financial Services. Suzanne, good morning to you. Great to see you this morning. Lovely to see you again, Joanna. And uh, as Fauzi was saying, the Aussie dollar has steadied. Now, we'll get to GameStop in a moment, but how did the markets end the week? Well, the markets had a very volatile week and ended down for the week. And when you talk about GameSpot, it was like a, a flow-on effect, a ripple effect through the markets. So that was dragging the whole indexes down for the week. It's been a really interesting battle to unfold this week between the amateur investors and the Wall Street giants. I was trying to explain it to my husband and I, I think I managed to do OK, but let's, um, <laughs> let's talk about it now. Um, tell us a bit about what happened this week first, Suzanne. So it's touted as a David and Goliath event, but it's probably a Goliath and many Davids. Mm. So what happened was you have hedge fund managers. They're the professional investors. And what they do is called short selling. And this means they look at a stock like GameStop and say that share, they think it's going to go down in price. So they borrow the shares from someone and sell them. And they look to then buy the shares back when they drop in price and make a profit. What happened, though, is social media came into play and they're the Davids and their nickname, in this case, the Reddit group. And what they said is, no, we don't believe in this short selling. And they encouraged people to buy GameStop shares. Now, the GameStop shares went up at one point, incredibly, 1,700%. Now, what that means <clears throat> is that the fund managers have to rush to buy back the shares that they sold. And they ended up having to pay a higher price. And that meant they had to access lines of credit. They also, in some cases, had to sell some of their other shares, their long positions, and that had the ripple effect in the share market. Mm. But there's many issues with this. It's making investing in the share market like a casino, mm. and it's making it a bit of gambling. And instead of people looking at the fundamental value of the shares, are they going to make a profit? What are their assets? All they're looking is the momentum based on social media pushes. I mean, I was talking to a colleague and his teenage daughter has never mentioned shares. And she said, Dad, don't be gambling on the horses. TikTok said you can buy shares for $1,000 and make 20000 and there's the, the crunch of the issue. Mm, once it hits social media, then it's anyone's game, I guess. But what does this mean for the future of shorting? Because I think the, the Reddit people have said that, you know, they're looking for other, other big hedge funds to target. What might it mean for shorting and also regulation of the market? Oh, regulation is a huge issue because what the regulators are concerned about is that the social media groups, say the Reddit, is not homogenous. So you might have some smart investors in there almost building a pyramid scheme by encouraging other less informed retail investors to buy and push up the share price. And then these smart ones sell out, but someone's left carrying the loss because eventually those shares will come back to their more fundamental value based on are they going to make a profit. And these retail investors could make significant losses. Now, it's not a clear delineation between good and evil because the Reddit group argue that the hedge fund managers are the evil and they're the goods. It's much more nuanced than that. But what I would say is that shorting will get much more attention and it's going to make a lot of the big fund managers very nervous mm -hmm. because since the pandemic, retail first-time investors have been pouring into the market, not just for shorting, but just for general investing and not making their decisions based on research. So that makes the market very confusing. But regulators will want transparency and they'll want markets to be efficient. So I would suspect there will be more regulation. Mm -hmm. In Australia since 2010, stockbrokers have to declare or their short positions. So we do know which stocks have significant short positions on them, but that's not the case all around the world. 
Well, it's been fascinating to watch and I'm sure there'll be no more changes to come. Let's move on to another topic and property prices. We've seen during the pandemic this trend of people uh, working from home and therefore moving yes. away from city centres and out into regional areas. What's that meant for property prices both in the cities and, but also in regional areas? So as far as around the country for 2020, you had most property prices recovered and were positive for the year. It was interesting to see the rentals though. House rentals were up around the country, but unit rentals were down. And that was very much a Sydney, Melbourne story. Now in Melbourne inner city, you know when you've got a lot of the high density apartments, the rents last year plummeted 7.6% and in Sydney, 5.7%. And that's because those cities have suffered more for not having the immigration and also the foreign students. And so that certainly pushed down the prices of those units. We've also seen booming rental and prices in regions, because as you say, many people have a more flexible arrangement for where they can live and have chosen not just to move out of high density housing, to move out of the cities in total. But the other interesting outcome was for the first time, Canberra has become the highest average rental in Australia at $624 a week. So I was surprised with that one. I think for property prices, we could take some comfort that you know how we had a lot of deferral of loans in the pandemic? Hmm. About 80% of those are now being repaid. And that's really important because we're going to have a stop of job seeker supplement, job keeper end of March. And we needed to have a very high proportion of those loans being covered. Otherwise, that could have been a big negative for property prices, particularly the units moving forward. So that's looking pretty good. Absolutely. All right, Suzanne Haddon, it's great to see you again. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, Joanna.